Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. The asset store is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video let's check out some highlights for May 24. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video where you covered the best free new assets, and the next one I'll be covering top visuals and effects. As always, there's links to the assets in the description, and as a bonus you can use the coupon code monkey10 to get 10% off your order. There's an excellent humble bundle right now with a mountain of assets, all for just 25 bucks. If you don't yet have a mega pack like this one, then I highly recommend you pick this up. Anytime you have an idea for a game, it is really useful to have a bunch of assets you can easily pick up and use. With all these assets, you can make tons of really interesting games. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest news on game dev, tech and gaming, then sign up for my game dev report newsletter. If you've seen my videos on that format, then the newsletter is really the same idea. Just text based, which lets me do it much more regularly than these big videos. So check out both links in the description. Alright, so starting off with a really nice complex asset for making projectiles and it's had on projectile factory. This one is a behavior based projectile system, so you can easily define the projectile data, you can use whatever visual you want for it, set it up exactly as you want it to spawn, what you want it to happen as it spawns, then add all kinds of weird behaviors. Like for example, should the projectile be raycast based? Should it maybe have some kind of explosion force? Should it just move forward or should it destroy itself on collision? This asset is made by Infinity PBR, so as usual it has tons of custom editor windows with lots and lots of details. It also comes with detailed documentation and video tutorials. On top of that, it also has integrations with various particle visual effect packs. So if you already own any of those, you can very quickly set this up. And something really unique is how this is actually the first asset that I've seen that has its own theme song. Definitely check out the asset page, just listen to the theme song, it's actually pretty fun. And then to make your game stand out, you need it to be visually unique. And one way to achieve that is with some image effects like these. This one is actually quite interesting. It is not really just a post-processing effect, but rather it's a framework to give you control over how exactly you want your game to be rendered. You can select various layers and apply strange effects to them. So with a bunch of combinations, you can get something very strange, very interesting looking. Like I said, being visually unique is extremely important nowadays. And by playing around with this tool, you can definitely get some strange unique visuals that might help your game stand out. Next, if you need a tool to help you make some maps, here's a nice one. This one is for making 2D maps, like for example your world map to move between levels. Or you can use it for the level maps themselves. It comes with over a thousand icons to make your own maps. They come in seven different styles. You've got summer, spring, and winter. Or you can also make them stylized in black and white or sepia. You can change these through a simple drop down menu, so just one button click and it looks something different. And of course, you can also change all of these sprites themselves. So you can easily swap between a city sprite sheet or medieval or Arabic. This can be a really great way to get tons of very different, very unique maps done very quickly. Next, here's a really nice one for smoothing meshes. Basically, the question is are you tired of the low poly style with very harsh polygons? If so, then this actually helps you smooth those out. So you can still use low poly assets, of which there are tons and tons of them, but you can make them look quite a bit more smooth. Now, importantly, this does not include new polygons. It still has exactly as many polygons as before. This one really just modifies the shading in order to make it look smooth. You can select each individual edge you want to smooth and easely make it much less sharp. Personally, I love the low poly style. I love it visually and I also love it because there's so much variety in it. But if you're not a fan of that harsh look, then with this tool you can still use a ton of those asset packs but make them look much more smooth. Or perhaps you just need to generate a mountain of rocks. If so, look at this one. This one is a tool for generating rocks. And the results are actually quite impressive. There are tons and tons of parameters. All of them modify the output while always remaining really nice and consistent. The results look visually satisfying whilst also looking a little bit random. You can modify the rock shape but also the material and the visuals. So you can, for example, add some moss or some snow on top. Or you can make it with some really strange colors to make it look like rocks from an alien planet, kind of like Namek. And if all you want is really just tons of pre-generated rocks, then you can just use the ones in demo scene to use to populate your entire world. And then here's a nice performance tool called Animator LOD. Like the name implies, this adds a level of detail onto your animators, meaning the further they are from the camera, the less bones animate and the less often they animate, making it quite a bit more performant. This can give you a really nice boost if your game has tons and tons of skin characters on screen at the same time. It is super easy to use. You can just add a manager script and an individual script next to your animator and that's really it. By doing that, animators that are close to the camera will animate as usual, but those that are far away will animate much less often. You can configure a bunch of parameters to customize how exactly you want the LOD logic to work, but just by default, it already works great. Next, for another animated tool, here is fake stop motion. So if you're going for a stop motion or maybe some animated cartoon style, 
If so, then this tool can help achieve that look. It simply takes your animations and makes them run much less often, so you can cap it to just something like 6 FPS, which makes it very stuttery, so very much like stop motion. Or you can put it at something like 12 FPS to make it a little bit more cartoony. So if you were to combine this with either some kind of cell shader or a pixel shader, if so, then you can get a really interesting look for your game. Then here's one that I think I covered before. I believe this one is an upgrade to version 2.0. It is called Better Transform, and it's exactly what the name implies. It's a tool that improves upon the regular transform component, so you can modify the units, so you can very easily scale things in either feet or meters. You can inspect the size and units of a certain object, like for example a character, being able to easily see how tall is your character. Then you can also add notes to your game objects, so you can do that instead of using the name itself as a note. You can toggle between local and global space in the transform itself. You can also copy and paste in various ways. All in all, it does look like one of those assets that Unity probably should really have by default. Next, if you're making something that interacts with the Windows API, then look at this tool. I have done some work with the Windows API, like for example in the tutorial where I made a transparent Unity window. Interacting with that API is always really tricky. There's lots of really obscure functions. So a tool like this, to simplify that, it does sound really useful, especially if you're making, for example, non-game things in Unity. You can use this to easily maximize or minimize your window. You can modify the frame borders, set the transparency, the default menu buttons. You can update the text in the title bar, work with the clipboard, get some system information, and tons more. So if you're making non-game things in normal windows, if so, then this can help make that process much, much easier. Then if you want a little bit more control over your scenes, look at this one. It's a simple tool to help you manage your scenes much more easily. So if you're the kind of person who likes using lots of additive scenes, then this can really help. You can add all of those additive scenes to a list, and then when loading that object, that scene, it will automatically load every single one of those scenes. Or it also has just one simple benefit that I love. Since this tool is based on scriptable objects and direct references, because of that, there are no string references. So that alone is a really great bonus. That is definitely something you should implement in your games, either with this tool or by yourself. Alright, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on the Unity Asset Store for May 24. There's links to all in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. And don't forget the excellent Humble Bundle, and sign up to the Game Dev Report. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.